Hey everyone, I'm here with uh, Phil Hissom, who is the author of a curriculum that we're using called Dignity Serves. And it's obviously made a huge impact in our lives, and that's why we've really decided to develop a strategic partnership with him and the organization that he is uh, founder and executive of called Polis Institute. And so, Phil, thank you for taking the time to sure. talk with us here today. And tell us a little bit about Dignity Serves, how, kind of how it came to be about, and sort of the background of it. Yeah, the, uh, it was, it's the fruit of a three-year research project uh, that I got involved with at, at seminary, uh, my wife and I, and was looking at the culture of service in Central Florida, how needs are being met, um, and uh, trying to make recommendations about what we should do. And what we found is a lot of people really eager to help out, but not really knowing you know, where and how to do that. Um, so, and some of the things that we found that the people were doing things were actually uh, not, not only not helping, but maybe harming uh, those they wanted to help. And so we wanted to respond to that by developing principles that would teach the, the Jesus' heart to serve in a way that's really transformational, a way that's really impactful, really honors the dignity in, in everyone involved and leads to real transformation. So those principles became the six uh, lessons of Dignity Serves. And I know that there's a lot that's, uh, that's covered in the curriculum, but what is, I know that there's one really central kind of big idea with, with the curriculum. Right, yeah, the big idea, and it is, is what we call dignified interdependence. It is what we would argue is the biblical ideal for relationships. Um, more specifically in the Bible, what we call partnership in the gospel. But culturally, as we're working together to, to, to seek the peace and prosperity of the city or a neighborhood, you know, any kind of initiative that's going to build the peace and prosperity, Christians have a calling to be involved with. And, um, and ideally, that's advancing the gospel. So, dignified interdependence is everyone involved being that their needs and gifts, or what we call assets, being employed, being honored, and all done uh, for the glory of God. And that's a, it's a response to the other kinds of relationships that happen when we serve. Um, either a dependent relationship, no relationship, which would be self-sufficiency, or uh, even reciprocity, you know, kind of mutuality, which can be better, but uh, it's not the biblical ideal. It still can just be transactions between two people. So dignified interdependence, if you really understand the word dignity as value, pointing to ultimately to Christ, that's the norm. And so that's the big idea that the curriculum teaches. So it's really not just about one-sided service, it's about um, inviting people that you serve to come and serve with you and develop in relationships in that way. Right, yeah. We, we, it's easier to talk about relationships than it is to build them. You know? right. So um, we all know it's important, but how do you do that, especially when people come very different backgrounds. How do you really develop a, a, an interdependent or mutual relationship that you know there's a you're honoring God in the process? It's 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 difficult. It challenges us to be confessional, to be humble, and to really seek out you know the gifts and interests of those we want to help, not just what they lack. You know, it's really interesting because Phil, you are located right here in the Paramore area of Orlando, a very distressed community. And you know you've shared a couple stories with me of just how this, uh, some of these principles have really impacted people in this community. And why don't you share one of those stories with some of the guys that you work with at the homeless center? Yeah, we've we've just instead of just finding out what they lack, you know, we take efforts to to ins try to inspire them to want to serve others with their giftedness and get them out doing service projects. The homeless uh, clients at this ministry. And we've seen that as just a very powerful uh, tool to not only lead them to seeing their value, to helping others, to faith in God, um, without a lot of lectures or, or a lot of like, hey, let's give them job training, things that are, you know, the job training isn't helpful, but like just getting them out doing volunteer service projects with other people who aren't homeless. So they're able to serve together with just people from the pews of a, of a more middle-class church serving alongside um, has led to, to, to transformation. We had one 
uh, service project day out in November, and out of the seven that came out from the homeless ministry, six are now off the street. Wow. One guy was homeless nine years, one guy was homeless eight years, um, and uh, there was other things going on there. We, we, we teach a Bible study, and we try to encourage them in other ways, but they cited specifically that coming out and serving um, was the impetus for their change. We're sitting in a chapel that was painted by some homeless guys. Wow. And uh, two of the guys within a week had a job, and, and a week later were off the street. And I asked them, you know, what, what, what sparked that change? It's like, well, I realized that there was more to my life than, than me just giving up and being homeless. I, I have something to offer. Wow. And uh, so we demonstrated their value rather than just talking about it and leading to change. It's really impactful. Yeah, that, that story I think is really impactful. Well, we are just really excited to have a relationship with you guys and be able to get this curriculum in the hands of as many people as we can and kind of help lead them through it. So thank you so much for all of your work. And I know that Polis does other things besides the, this curriculum. Um, you guys can also offer consulting services or I guess you do a lot of training classes. A lot of training, yeah, geared towards, you know, how do you, how do you see, see it through to real long-term transformation and chronically distressed neighbors. Well, thank you so much. And we'll make sure to include a link to Polis Institute so you guys can learn more if you want to. So again, Phil, thank you so much yeah, for your time. Thank you, Jay. All right.